Let us remain standing just a moment for prayer. Shall we bow our heads? Our kind and gracious Father, we approach thy throne of grace in the name of thy Son, the Lord Jesus, asking for mercy from the throne. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will look upon us and be merciful, that you will give unto us of thy grace tonight. Forgive us of our shortcomings, our trespasses against thy great holy law. And we would ask tonight that you would remember every person that's in divine presence. May this great message that's just went forth sank deep into the hearts of everyone. That will be watered by faith and bring forth a great harvest unto thy kingdom. Grant tonight that there will not be one feeble person in our midst when the service closed. May there not be one that has unforgiven sins. Then when we go tonight to our separate homes, the closing of the service, May we talk along the road like those coming from Emmaus, saying, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? For we ask it in Jesus' name, thy Son. Amen. Amen. Be seated. I was just driving up when I heard the last of the message that was being given, and I was only sorry that I didn't get here in time to hear the beginning of it. I think that we've had a, the gospel preached to us tonight. Now, just before I call those prayer cards that we never got finished with last evening, I would just like to talk to you a few minutes on the Word to kind of get the crowd quietened and every person to their place, that the Lord would bless us and heal the sick and save those that are savable. I was walked on the platform Sunday afternoon, and I was felt then that I made a mistake because that I spoke after that. Because our gracious brother Tommy Osborne had given a message, and my son Billy, when we went outside, said, Daddy, why did you say anything anymore? Said, The Holy Spirit was just filling the room. And then when I walked up again tonight, the same thing taken place. And I'm not a, much of a preacher anyhow. I didn't get enough education for that. But the Lord just give me another way to declare his gospel, seeing my heart wanted to do something and I wasn't qualified perhaps in any other way. But I'm so glad that he lets me do what I can to show that I love him and appreciate him with all my heart. In the book of Genesis, the 18th chapter and the first eight words of the 14th verse. I would like to read this. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And now, just a little drama to kind of catch the feeling of the audience. Hours before they come to get me, while I stay in a room praying, waiting, close the doors, nobody bothers me, and I just keep praying. And then when I feel his presence real near, sometimes I look up and see it, that light that you see in the picture and they've got around the world now. And then coming to the meeting, I like to walk right in and kind of feel out the meeting to see where the Holy Spirit is moving, and then I can have my prayer line going. And now we see in the first part of this chapter... Abraham was sitting in the door of his tent on a real hot day. It must have been a very hot day. 
Perhaps a lot of complaints had been coming in lately by the herdsmen that the grass was all gone, the land was drying up, and that the cattle was becoming very thin, and also that the water supply was just about all gone. They had found the water holes in the land, and as the water got low, they would dig out and dig out till it got down to where the water was seeping through the rocks, and still the cattle did not have enough water to supply them. You know, sometimes when things are going wrong, dark, we know by nature that it's darkest just before day. And many times when we see disastrous things happening like that, especially to believers, we must bear this in our mind, that it's Satan trying to block the blessing that's on its road. That was very much so in this case. Satan was trying to tempt them to feel that they had done wrong and was trying to block the oncoming visitation that God was going to give to Abraham and Sarah. And we are taught in the Scriptures that all things work together for good to them that love God. No matter how bad it seems, remember it has to be working for your good. I'm so glad of that. Satan been after me all day. So I just believe that there's a blessing in store here in this city somewhere. And I know when he tempts and tries to block out, what's he trying to do? Get you to disbelieve. And if you, the worst thing that you can do is disbelieve God. And as soon as you get a little scared, well, maybe I haven't done this and haven't done that, right then Satan's got that blessing conquered for you. You can't get to it as long as Satan makes you think that. And perhaps if we would listen to such things of temptations like that and would pay attention to them, then it would be that we would miss the blessing. I wish I had time, it's on my mind now, of one particular case of how I could not find a place to pray. God seemed to lead me into the wilderness and way down in southern Indiana where a little girl was laying on a bed of affliction in her, she'd had two burglar and she had not even raised her head from the pillow for nine years and eight months. She belonged to a church that did not believe in divine healing. And at that time, I'd just taken over on my circuit the Milltown Baptist Church. Being a Baptist minister, well, I was uh, preaching the circuit, and I'd taken this church in. And the Lord had been doing some great things, and they sent for me to come pray for this little girl, about 17 years old. And she was a very critical condition. And the good brother who taken me over there, her father was a deacon in this certain church that did not believe in divine healing, and had made a statement that if any of the members went up to the Baptist church where I was praying for the sick would be excommunicated from the church. Her father being a a deacon, it kind of placed him in an awful condition. So I'll brief it just quick as I can. And I remember I went to see the little girl. Her mother went out of the room, and her father had left the house, for they would have nothing to do with it. But the little girl had read a book that I had written called Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when I went into the room, she could not even raise her hands to hold her studeman cup to spit. When she had coughed, she weighed some approximately 35 pounds or 40. Just her little legs were just about so big, way thinner than Florence Nightingale in that 
picture that was healed with cancer. And I prayed for her, and she asked me if uh, she was going to be able to walk like a little Methodist girl that had been crippled so long by the name of Nail. And I said, Sister, the angel of the Lord had spoke to me and told me to go up in that country and hunt that girl up. Well, I said, I do not know. After the revival of two weeks just coming to the church, a new minister, we had a baptismal service up at a place called Totten's Ford. That afternoon when I baptized some 150 people in the water, then I went to dinner with some of my friends, an old friend of mine by the name of George Wright. And something began to press me, saying, go up into the wilderness and pray. Well, I just couldn't get it off of my mind. Now, when anything presses you like that, you go do it right away, because it's the Holy Spirit. Now, watch something to block it. And Ms. Wright said, Brother Billy, when I ring the old country dinner bell, I don't guess you have my here in Oklahoma, but back up there, they'd ring a bell, it's hilly country, and the farmers can hear this bell ring, and then they'll come to their dinner. And she said, when I ring the bell, supper's ready. And she said, then you come on in and be ready to go back to church tonight. The service is closing for the revival then. And I said, all right, Sister Wright. Went up on the hill and I started to kneel down and the green briars was cutting me. Well, I moved over a little farther and it was so rough on the ground, them rocks, I just couldn't get comfortable. The rocks. I went around the side of the hill and it was leaning too much sideways and you know, the devil just trying to keep you from getting the blessing. That's all it was. <laughs> then I climbed up a little farther into the thicket, and I knelt down. The, the mosquitoes were just humming all around my ears, and I couldn't hardly pray. And I believed then it was the devil. So I said, Oh, Lord, God, be merciful, and just threw up my hands and started praying anyhow, and just let the mosquitoes fill up if they wish to. But there was something that was burdening in my heart. And after I become so lost in prayer, I guess you Christians know what it means to be lost in prayer. Just forget where you are. That's praying in the Spirit, I believe. And I opened my eyes, and just the side of a little dogwood bush, there was that light hanging there, and it light shining down to where I was. He said, Rise and go by the way of Carter's. Well, when I looked around, it was almost dark. The bell had been ringing and had search parties out farming. I jumped up and run through the woods real quick, and I jumped over a little strand of wire right into Brother Wright's arms. He said, Brother Billy, he said, Mama has been ringing that bell, and we've hunted everywhere. I said, Brother Wright, no supper. Little Georgie Carter's going to come out of that bed and live. And he said, how do you know? I said, the Lord just met me right up there by that dogwood bush and told me to go by the way of Carter's. Do you believe God answers on both ends of the line? Amen. Her mother, that afternoon, little Georgie wanted to be baptized so bad till she'd cried all afternoon. And her mother, a good woman, I'll give you her address if you'd like to write to her address. And her mother, a very fine woman, her father also. And they lived kind of the age of the little city. And so she'd cried all afternoon. Her mother, young, yet had turned gray from, from just sitting for nine years by the side of that girl, watching her dwindle away and die. She had not seen the leaves or the grass or anything for nine years and eight months. She had been on her back. They could not even put her on the bedpan. She had a rubber sheet under her, and they just pulled the sheet out, the regular linen sheet. And then she had been crying and wanting to be well so she could go and be baptized. And so that afternoon we had baptized the nail girl who had been crippled with, with a stroke for oh, a long time, or arthritis it was. It crippled her and pulled her leg in, and she was just as normal as any other girl. And she wanted to be baptized with the nail girl. And her mother had got so discouraged till. She went off in the kitchen to hear her own daughter crying, laying there dying. And she raised up her hands and she said, Oh, Lord Jesus, that 
imposter has come through this land and got my child so all wearied and shook up and said, there the poor little thing laying in there dying. And then him coming around and saying something like that and got her crying and, and everything. And while she was praying, now this is her story. I can't say this is true. Only I believe it is. She said she seen a shadow coming across the wall. And she thought it was her daughter who lived a few doors below her coming to see her around the house. And when she looked up, she said it was the shadow of Jesus on the wall. And he said, who's this? And pointed her finger this way. She seen like a vision, see my high forehead here coming in, packing a Bible over my heart. And she jumped up to run in to tell her daughter. And about that time, I was coming in the door. God's always Amen. got you there just at time, if you'll just believe it. Amen. My precious friends, I walked over to the bed and said, Georgie, I don't know why, but Jesus Christ looked at the back of her bed where when she could get her hands back, she'd rub all the paint off the little poster bed where her little hands had been back there crying and crying and praying. And said, Georgie, Jesus Christ makes you whole. Stand up on your feet. I don't know why I said it. In myself, I wouldn't have said that for nothing. Because how's a girl go to stand up when her legs isn't about that big around, up around the thigh? And her little arms, she couldn't even raise her hands up to take her sputum and cup. Now, you might ask your mother and let her give you the doctor's statement on it. And she, and when she uh, said, I uh, took her by the hand. And friend, how? I don't know. I can't say. But nothing is too hard for the Lord. And that girl jumped up out of that bed on those little sticks of legs that she was standing on. And I turned, so filled with the Holy Spirit, walked out the door. And in a few minutes, she, her mother fainted, screaming. People began to run from everywhere. And Georgie went outside, named Georgie Carter went outside and was blessing the grass and leaves on the trees the first time she had seen them in nine years and eight months. And she, people was working with their mother because she thought that she had passed away. And, and Georgie run in to the place when she was taking TB. She would have been taking piano lessons or organ lessons, rather. And she was sitting at the organ playing. And her father heard the noise, and he run from the barn coming up to see what was the matter, bringing a little milk can, and he rushed in the door. And when he did, there set his daughter at the organ playing, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, where sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all their guilty stain. Now, her name is Georgie Carter, C-A-R-T-E-R, -E Georgie Carter, Milltown, Indiana, writer, if you'd like to get the testimony yourself. And then that shows you that when Satan is trying to block you from something that's right, keep on going regardless. Now, Satan was trying to block Abraham and Sarah because he knew that there was an angelic visitation coming. And then when everything rises all out of order, then we know something's wrong. Now, I believe maybe if we would listen to Satan, we might miss seeing it like Sarah did. Let's think that Sarah, being that she'd done what she did, let's think that she was kind of a little fussy that morning, that she might have said, to Abraham, you know the supplies are getting low here, and the herdsman says the, the pasture is all dried up and the water holes. I think you made the wrong decision when you chose to come up here and let Lot and Mrs. Lot and their family live down there with plenty. Why, the other day, or some time ago, rather, when I went to the city, well, Miss Lot had on one of the prettiest dresses I ever seen. It was styled by the Egyptians. Why, a camel caravan come through, and she got the new styles. There's no such things as them caravans and styles coming through out here. 
But if she just knowed there was more than a caravan coming through, there was a host of the Lord coming that way. And I might have heard her say something like this. You ought to have seen the new hairdo that she had, you know. Um, a woman 60 years old trying to look 20. But that just things that attracts your attention, something from the things of God. That's what I'm trying to get at. And you should have seen her. And poor old Abraham, faithful old brother, I, that didn't shake him one bit. He just walks over and gets his chair and sits down in the door of the tent. I like that. Did you notice when the angels come to Lot, Lot was sitting in the gate, but Abraham was sitting in the door. The gate comes into the yard, but the door goes into the house. I like to sit in the door on the altar, the closest I can get to him. That's where my expectations is. On the altar, waiting for his appearing, Abraham gets his chair and sits down and sees the faithful old servant of God bows his head and maybe Sarah a little fussy and going on, but he just let it go and begin to think back how many great blessings God has given me. You know, sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. You believe that? Then, while he was sitting there thinking of the time that God appeared to him in the name of the Almighty, the El Shaddai, the bosom, the breast of the woman, the strength giver. Now, if you notice, the word is a compound word, which means Shaddai, not a breast, but breasted too. He was wounded for our transgressions with his stripes. We were healed. Oh, I'm so glad of that. Either Either promise of God's breast. He's a strong one, the strength giver. If you're Abraham, old man, 99 years old, said, Abraham, I am the breasted God. Just lay a hold of my promise and nurse your strength from me. That's what it is to every believer that'll take God's word and don't doubt it, but just hold on to it and nurse your strength. It's like the baby laying on the mother's bosom. All the time it's nursing, it's satisfied. When a real Christian can get a hold of a promise of God and believe it's for them, he's satisfied while he's nursing the strength. Come in, he won't complain a bit. He's just satisfied. Oh, I love that satisfaction of knowing that God said so. While the aged old saint was sitting there with his head down, praying, no doubt, it was then when he lifted up his head and he saw three men coming towards the tent. Oh, he jumped quickly. It must have been the Spirit. said, go to them. You know, there's something about Spirit-filled people that recognizes the presence of God. I don't know why it is, but it must be that they, they got something in them that magnetized them to that Spirit of God. And he recognized that there was something, even Lot, in his backslidden condition, when those two evangelical angels, messengers, evangelists, or whatever you wish to call them, come down there, Lot sitting in the gate, a little spark was still left in his heart. He recognized that it was angels. It was messengers from God. While Abraham went to meet them, he turned them aside and said, Come in and sit down. Sit under the oak a little while, and let me fetch a little water and wash your feet, and I'll give you a morsel of bread, and just rest a little bit. Then you may go on your way. Oh, when he's sitting down there, though they didn't look any different from any other man, because they were dressed dust on their clothes and come from some other country, Probably their feet dusty and their clothes ragged. But Abraham knew inside there, there was something real. The Spirit declared it. Why? He kept himself in a spiritual atmosphere all the time. That he could recognize right from wrong all the time. That's the way the Christian ought to do today is keep yourself prayed up under a spiritual atmosphere. Always never seeing the, the bad side, looking to the good side. You are children of God. 
expecting his blessings. After he stopped them, I can see him run in and grab Sarah by the hand and say, Come aside, darling, just a moment. I want to tell you something. I believe we're getting our day of visitation right now. Out through the herd, he went and got a little calf and dressed it and brought it out and fed the man. Two of them raised up their heads and went on to their appointed place to preach the gospel to that country that was blinded by their preaching. How we ought to think today that the preaching of the gospel blinds the unbeliever. No wonder they can't see. They're blinded. God says they have eyes but can't see, ears but can't hear. God, if anything, I want him to do for me is open my spiritual eyes that I might recognize him and look around and see him, for he's everywhere. I want to see him and be so acquainted with him that I'll, that I'll know him on the very first sight. I'll recognize that it's God. That's my heart's desire. Be as Abraham was. And remember, if we be dead in Christ, we are Abraham's seed. Amen. And Abraham recognized those men as they come up as being messengers of God. For the way he treated them, it proved that he knowed that they were God's messengers. And after the other two had went to their appointed place to preach the gospel, this one who he called Lord, and that Lord's capital L-O-R-D, Elohim, the great mighty Jehovah, he was in flesh. A man. Someone said to me some time ago, said, now wait just a minute, Billy, you don't really believe that that was God. I said, I sure believe it was God. Said, how in the world could God ever be in a human form? I said, well, you might think it was a theophany, but it wasn't because he eat the flesh of the calf, drink milk, eat cornbread, sat there, talk. He was a man. God was showing something. Oh, why, it's easy for our God to just reach over and get a handful of calcium, potash, and petroleum. We are made out of 16 different elements of the world. He made all the elements. Just reach over and grab a handful of elements and say, step in that, Gabriel. Reach over and get another, step in that, Michael. Get another for yourself, step in that. Why, sure, he'll call me someday, and I may not be no more than that. And he'll call me back into my body at the resurrection. We got the mighty God for our God. Sure, I believe it was him. And then disappear and vanish. He just used that just as long as he wanted to. Then just send it back to the dust again. He'll use you as long as he wants to and then send you back to the dust. He'll use me as long as he wants to and then I'll go back to the dust. But all oh, that glorious... Thought and that glorious truth that someday he'll call and we'll rise from the dust. We're looking for that hour. And here he is now. And Sarah, I, let's just break in on her for a minute. There she sat back there and say, I wonder how many fanatics my husband can entertain. And there he's sitting out there, you know, and Abraham just interested, maybe the old fly bush, you know, planet, the flies away and saying, um, well, um, I see the angel takes his chair, maybe, and, and leans back toward his back to the tent. And Sarah, listening through the tent, you know, kind of eardropping, you know, and listening through the tent. And she was kind of in an awful mood that morning. You don't see things when you come to church in that kind of a mood. You just don't need to try it. You just might as well stay at home. You won't get nothing out of it. Go home in a... When you come to church, come prayed up. Come in the atmosphere. Come expecting. Yeah. Abraham knew that the time of the promise was coming close. It had to be. He was a hundred years old. He was expecting it any time. He watched every minute. When he ran and told Sarah, this, I believe, is our day of visitation. And she kind of looked at him with them uh, big eyes and thought, well, Abraham, you said that a long time, but, you know, there will come a time when it will be so, if God said so. Then, when the angel took his chair and leaned back, he said, Abraham, seeing that you have got favor with God, that you are an heir of the world, and, and you're going to be father of many nations, and you've believed that since you're 75 years old, 25 years, and otherwise you've waited for this promised child by Sarah, 
And now I'm not going to keep this from you, what I'm going to do. I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. And you know, Sarah in there, ear dropping, kind of halfway in an upset mood from her condition that morning, she's thought in her heart, now isn't that a silly thing? Think, in our day, me an old woman, as old as I am, here I am, 90 years old. There sits my husband, Abraham, a hundred years old. Well, I've, it's not been with me as women for 50 years. And Abraham, while well, we've been married since we were about 17 and him about 27. Well, how, how could that be? How could it be? See, she had herself all out of condition to receive it when God brought it. Amen. Oh, my. Don't never get that in your heart. Amen. Be open. Be ready. She missed it. She failed to see it. Uh, maybe uh, if we don't watch, friends, the church is going to fail to see it. Let's not look for church hairdos and new dresses. Let's look for the Holy Spirit to come in the supernatural. Raise some things. The church don't need a facelift. It needs a birth. The Holy Ghost to come into the church. Bring back people and that believes the supernatural and holds on and waiting for the coming of the Lord Amen. as if it might be any hour living in them conditions. Here she was in that shape saying, now how could that happen in our modern time? How could it happen to me in my condition? But it happened just the same. Abraham out there waiting with anticipation. You see, it wasn't made known to her. It was made known to them that was looking for it. That's the way it comes yet to those who are looking so he was watching. Abraham was. He said, yes, my Lord. Yes, that's right. The promise was. And, and I've believed it all along. He said, now, Abraham, just about the time of life it will be each month. Well, I'm going to visit you. And you're going to have that baby. And Sarah, you know, to herself, and laughed kind of to herself. Now watch. Abraham gets the sign now. See, Sarah was too frustrated, too... Too concerned about the new hairdo she's seen or, or something else. Sometimes we're too much frustrated about the, fellow, the other fellow's got the biggest denomination or his congregation dresses better than mine or they've got a bigger church down on the corner than we got. What difference does that make? I want God. I don't care if I have to worship Him on the street corner in a coal shed, wherever it might be. I want God. Let me have my heart and condition if I wear overalls. So I can watch God and see his move and recognize him, not pass it by. He said, Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah, a stranger? Never seen him before. Where is your wife, Sarah? And how did he know that he had a wife? And how did he know that her name was Sarah? Said, she's in the tent behind you. And when Sarah laughed, he said, why did she laugh? He caught the sign. He knew what it was. Sarah didn't get it. She even come forth and tried to deny it. God would have destroyed her up on that if she hadn't been a part of Abraham. And a lot of times our unbelief would destroy us if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ. God can't destroy us now because the blood of Jesus Christ keeps the God off of us. We are part of Christ just as Sarah was part of Abraham, for we are the bride of Christ. And we people who's born of the Spirit of God ought to wake up, get out of our stews, and watch for the supernatural sign of the coming of the Lord Jesus, His signs that He promised. Remember, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said that same thing would repeat again, as it was in the days of Sodom. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man that God would be working through human flesh doing the same thing that He did then. God, help us to wake up. The day of visitation is here. You say, oh, God doesn't send angels anymore. The Holy Spirit is that angel. The Holy Spirit is that person. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, He, the Holy Ghost, when He comes, he will do the works that He did. He'd be with us, even in us. And He would bring things to our remembrance that He had taught and would show us things to come. The works that I do shall He also. Now, we're living in that day. We're living in the time. 
Watch, as it was in the days of Sodom. But you know what? The other class of people down in Sodom didn't get that sign. Just the called out group got that sign. Just those who recognized it. Those who understood it. That's the way it is today. The Holy Spirit doing His works. The great big groups of people and masses of the world. And it's becoming a modern Sodom and Gomorrah. You know it is. Well, I read in a, a newspaper here in Los Angeles here some time ago. I was flying over Los Angeles and seen that homosexuals was on the increase of 40% over the year before. Man taking man to room and living with him like wives. Perversion. That's exactly what the sin of Sodom was. And that's the thing we got. Even our government's full of it. The whole nation's surrounded by it. Communism, everything else. Breaking it up. It ain't the robin that pecks on the apple that kills the apple. It's a worm at the core. I'm not afraid of Germany or some of these other nations. It's our own rottenness among us getting away from God that's killing this nation. It's rotten. It. Cold formalism coming into the spirit-filled churches is cooling it off. That's the thing's going to kill us. Not just looking for something here in the material of the world and big jobs and fine times and big promises and all these kind of things. Take your eyes off of that. Amen. Wake up to the fact that God still remains God. Amen. And He's the same God that promised the sign. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe He's here. You believe that? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Your God, the everlasting God, and I'm quoting your own beloved son's words. He said, as it was down there that day at Sodom, just before the fire fell from the heavens and destroyed the city, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Now, Father, we see yonder hanging in the hangars atomic bombs setting out on islands, atomic bombs, hydrogen bombs that'll blow a hole in the ground 150 feet deep for 100 miles square. Thousands of those pointed to each nation, submarines worming their way around underwater, earthquakes in divers places, flying saucers in the air, fearful sights in the heavens above, man's hearts failing, perplexed of time, distress between nations. Oh, God, then here you come moving on the scene with the Holy Spirit, pulling into the church, bringing up the days of Sodom. We see the Sodomite spirit, women on the streets, in the churches, dressing immorally, wearing all kinds of filthy, immoral dress clothes to tempt the man on the streets, evil spirits on them and don't know it. Fine women sending their souls to hell and will have to answer the day of judgment for committing adultery. Though she be as pure as a lily physically, but she thought herself before man, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And the woman not knowing, and her dressing like that, and a man looking at her, she'll have to answer for committing adultery, for she permitted herself to be dressed like that and set before man to tempt him. God, look at the nation, Lord. Look at the church, how it swallowed that stuff up this, of Satan just as easy. And Satan is fed on this corruption of hell. And many thousands has believed it. Oh, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord. You said if the work wasn't cut short, there'd be no flesh saved. Truly, Lord, we see that in our, ourselves today. See the falling away and the cooling off. May the remnant that escapes out of this Babylon, may it rise and shine. May you fill it with the power of God. The Holy Spirit, come upon it, Lord, and perform the great works of God and pull that which is ordained to eternal life back into the foe again. Grant it, Lord. Grant it. Hear our prayers. People are sitting here tonight. We're to call this prayer line in a few minutes, and people have come to the line. I pray, Father, that you'll wake people up to let them know that we're living in the, like a modern Sodom and Gomorrah. Grant it, Lord, that they'll see that that angel that was promised to visit through human flesh 
And Lord, we know that that angel is a messenger from heaven, which is the Holy Ghost. It's him that wants to work through us the will of God to call the church. Grant it, Lord. Send him again tonight. Send that great Elohim that come down in dust and made himself known because he could talk to man through the dust. Use the dust that's in your Lord that's been consecrated to you. This sanctified dust by the blood of Jesus. Use them, Lord. Let, if there be an unbeliever here, Lord, let them see that the hour is approaching. They see it in the newspapers. They hear it on radios and televisions. Now may they see the sign of God that he is calling his church, giving her that final last call, that final last sign that she would receive. We've had healings and speaking with tongues and miracles and so forth, but that visit is what we are looking for tonight, Lord. Grant it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sorry I took you so long. Brother, sister, I'm just a lump of clay. Don't you pay attention to me, but you listen to what I'm saying. The coming of the Lord's drawing near. I don't know how near. No one knows. But I believe it's real close at hand. I see everything just a happening. I want you to be ready. I want you to really cut loose, of, lay aside every sin, every weight, and the sin that is easily beset you, that you might run with patience the race that's set before us. Looking to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. Look at his. Look at his meekness and lowliness. Look at his kindness and mercy. Look at his spirit coming back to the earth. That proves that he's alive. Amen. He isn't dead. They couldn't even kill the body. They killed it, truly. But God raised it up again. It's alive forevermore, sitting at the right hand of God. The spirit that was in it is here in the church tonight. Promised that we're in the end time. Now, I don't remember just where we left off the other night calling in this prayer cards. We had some left. We called some and then the Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May it be so. God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. Remember, the Holy Spirit that wrote this book, the Holy Spirit that was in that dust down there at Sodom, is the same Holy Spirit that's in this building tonight. He can do the same thing. You believe that? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. I want you to pray. As I, I, I'm stumbling for words, I, he wants me to do something, I don't know what it is. So just pray with me. And then uh, the Lord's trying to do something different, I don't know what it is. Just be reverent and everyone, just keep your seat. Just be, we don't know what something might happen here in a moment. I never had this before just like this. <clears throat> just be in prayer and May the Lord God reveal to us. Yes, here it is. I'm going to turn my back to this audience. Let you know that the same angel that was there at Sodom that gave that sign with his back turned is the same angel that's here tonight. It's not your brother. It's your Lord, the Holy Spirit. Now, you people in these sections of these churches here tonight, I don't say it will. Something made me do this. But if the Holy Spirit will come here in this building and perform and do just as he did there at Sodom to an elected church, a called out people separated from that bunch of people down there, that's where he come to, Abraham. The, the angels' messengers went on down into Sodom and preached, but this one stayed behind to the church, the called out church. And he gave them a sign that he was. Now, if the Holy Spirit will do that, and you'll pray in your heart and believe God, say, God, I'm a child of Abraham, and I believe with all my heart, and let 
the Holy Spirit come and perform here tonight as he did down there. Will all of you believe on him with all your heart? Let's just on the piano, ever who is the pianist there, if you will, sing the great, just play slowly. The great physician now is near, if you will, while we just pray. Now, this is spiritual. I remember some time ago that was playing Fort Wayne, Indiana. Something happened. A dunker girl who didn't have the Holy Ghost, she got filled with the Spirit and jumped up from the piano and run away. About 5,000 people sitting there seeing that piano continually playing. The great physician now is near. People just raising up everywhere, being healed. As much a bunch of Amish and Dunkards, Fort Wayne, the sympathizing Jesus. I'm going to look at my brethren back here. You pray. Brethren. We all go to meet someday in the land beyond. And we'll have to give an account for our ministry. What we do with Jesus called Christ. We teach our people that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that, don't you, brother? Now, now just a moment. There's someone to my extreme right praying. It's a man. And he's praying because he's in a serious condition. He's suffering from a lack of bladder trouble. He's got a tumor. He's had an operation. And it's, he's up for another operation. That's the man sitting right there with his hand up. That's true. If that's true, stand on your feet. If we're strangers, one another, wave your hand. Do you believe the same angel of God is in the building? God bless you, brother. Except, what did you touch, sir? You were praying, wasn't you? For your healing. Well, then, if me standing here with my back turned to you, that same angel that declared this at Sodom, that Jesus said would be here in the last days just before he's coming, then, folks, he's on his road here. He's coming. That's right. Pray. Now sitting close to him, right behind him, is a woman. She's got trouble with her side. She has headaches. Mrs. Arnold, if you believe with all your heart, all right. I do not know you. Is that right, lady? We're strangers to one another. Is that your name? Is that your condition? You were praying, wasn't you? You touched something. <laughs> the man sitting right back there with high blood pressure, if you will believe, sir, we accept it as your healing. You do? Look at me gray-headed, sir. Brits, you can believe with all your heart. Do you, sir? All right. Then the blood pressure will leave you. I don't know him. Never seen him in my life. Is that right, sir? Raise up your hand if we're strangers to one another. What are them people touching? And in the midst of this all, I feel doubt moving in. What are you doing? Not being merciful. Don't do that. The Holy Spirit is your, thus saith the Lord. I see before me a woman. She's holding a water-headed baby. The baby has had surgery. It's got water on the brain. She's sitting right down here holding the baby. You know who I'm talking to? Mrs. Yeager? Stand up and believe for the baby. You believe on the Lord? If thou canst believe, 
How about over in this section here? So that you'll see it just stays in one section. You believe over here. Do you believe it? A lady sitting here, high blood pressure. If you'll believe, lady, uh, Lord, who is she? Mrs. Barrett, B-I-R-L-E-Y, Barrett, believe with all your heart, and you shall have your healing also. You believe it? Right? What about this woman laying down here on this cot, stretcher? Look over this way, lady. You have a prayer card? I guess you don't. Well, I don't, I don't think... I don't forgot to tell you about prayer cards. I guess none of you... You don't have no prayer card? I can't heal you, lady. But you believe if God can tell me what's your trouble, will you accept it? You go to die laying there. That's one thing, sure. You got an overfluided body. That's fluid and everything backing up on you. Is that that's the truth, isn't it? Now I never seen you in my life. This is the first time. And if you believe it with all your heart and don't doubt that fluid will leave you and you can go home and be well. Amen. Do you believe? Do you believe the angel of the Lord here? How many of you believers raise up your hand? Well now lay your hands on one another. Put your hands on one another, if you're believers. Oh, God, Holy Spirit that's present, the angel that was promised, that Jesus said would be here as it was in the days of Sodom. Lord, God, make Satan to leave this people. I hold them before you and zealous of them. Come out of that group, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Move away from those people and be dispelled from this building. And Jesus Christ, take glory and power forever. Now, if you believe him with all your heart, believe that he heals you, the Bible said these signs. That's right, lady. Get right up off that cot and go on home. That's the way. If you believe, stand up on your feet then everywhere. Except